welcome to Eric's workshop. Today is a very special day because I've got some special guests in here. Um, she's in the person of Mrs. Mary Amankwabwadu. And the husband is Eric Amankwabwadu. They are very special guests and I think I'm really honored to have them in the house today on Arthur's time. Thank you for coming. Thank you for and having me. I will say that she is a motivational speaker. She is a mother, she is a teacher and an author. And the husband is a mechanical engineer and a part-time artist, very good artist. In fact, you have to try and get some of his paintings because they are really good. <laughs> anyway, I will shoot. Um, it's gonna be some question time. But I have to make sure that I cover most of the areas. So it's not going to be that kind of conversation and all that. Though it's, it's, you know, but I will make sure that I cover all the relevant questions so that those that are aspiring to be authors and the young ones will know what to sort of the measures and steps to take to become very good writers. Welcome to Eric's workshop. Thank you very much. Mr. I'm very Nicole. pleased to have you here. Thank you. Thanks and thank you for coming. So, um, what do you do, and um, who are you, and um, what do you represent? Wow. Um, what do I do? I do many things. <laughs> um, I'm somebody who believes in purpose. So I do believe that each and every one of us has been called to do something here on earth. So uh, basically I discovered my purpose, I'd say close to about 16 years now. And it was to do with teaching, anything to do with teaching. So I have realized in the past 16 years, everywhere I find myself, um, I have to leave some form of knowledge, deposit something into somebody's life. So whether it's a child, um, or an adult, mm -hmm. it's all about impacting some form of knowledge. Yeah. Um, sharing what I have learned, my life experiences, life journey, uh, the good, the bad, the ugly, being able to put it out there and share with everybody so that people can also live their best lives. Mm -hmm. So I would call myself more um, a transformational educator. So sometimes it's in the classroom where we're teaching formal education or outside of the classroom where we're looking at life's lessons because I believe the the most um, important way of learning is through life's lessons. So when life knocks you really hard, that's when you learn out of experience. Um, who am I? Maria Mwakwabwedu, mother, wife, mother of three beautiful daughters, been married to my husband whom you introduced earlier, uh, almost what, 23 years now? Wow. So in fact, that's next, next time, month, <laughs> yes, next month is our wedding anniversary. Yeah. 22nd wedding anniversary, but we knew each other two years prior to getting right. married. Okay. So 24 years all together. Okay. And great. I just love life. Great. Yeah. Wow, this is this is really good because you've you've really sort of give us a glimpse of the whole shot. Thank you for answering that question. Thank you. When did you first realize that you wanted to be a writer? Um I I think right from the beginning of when I started developing myself. So up until about 13 years ago, 13, 14 years ago, when I had my youngest daughter, um, I had no clue what personal development was. Mm -hmm. So I started that journey of developing myself when I had had my daughter, the youngest one who's 13 years old now, mm -hmm. and had to take a break from being a career woman because I used to work at the bank then for close mm -hmm. to 10 years. I was at the bank, one of the high street banks in the UK. So I took a three year maternity break to look after my daughter. And during that season, I fell into deep depression. So being somebody who had fallen into deep depression, then obviously um, I was learning. Before you carry on, oh. how did that happen? And um... How? How did you fall into depression at that time? Oh, one very simple reason. All my life, I had learned from my mother that I had to work because she 
was somebody, both my parents lived here in the UK in the 60s and 70s. They got married here in the UK and everything. And my mother being a career woman when she was in the UK and when they relocated back to Ghana in 1974, she worked for a, cer uh, for a certain period. And then when I'm the first born, uh, there's three of us, myself and my two brothers. So when we came along or when I came along, daddy, who was a lawyer, says, stop working, stay at home and take care of the children. So what I now believe is that um, a young woman with a young family who loved life, had her own career as a fashion designer, had to put everything on hold to take care of her children. That had a toll on my mother's life. But I didn't really realize it had a toll on her until I became an adult myself. And one lesson she drummed in me, which I now know were her own, uh, what let me say, negative experiences, was the fact that I should never allow any man to tell me not to work. And that as a woman, I must have my own. So she drummed that in me being her only daughter, meaning that she being asked to stay at home to take care of the children, which was her number one job anyway, had some form of an impact on her because now from being a career woman, she had to rely on her husband for everything. So I came to the UK with that mindset that I was never going to allow anybody, particularly a man, not to tell me not to work. So fair enough. I come to the UK as a young woman. I'm working, met my husband at work. We got married and everything. And then the children start coming along. I was working, you know, with my middle daughter. I worked till the day that I was supposed to start maternity. And that was the same day I even had her. Very strong woman, isn't it? Well, you have to. It was, it was drowned into me. <laughs> Some of them, when they get into that situation, they fall ill for the rest of the period. So yeah. it's, it's quite, yeah, you're very strong. Thank you. So a third one comes along and now you have three children on your hand. What do you do? You have to take care of them. The first two were in school and we had left a six year gap between our second and our youngest. So that had its own impact on me as a woman and as a mother. So Eric and I had a, I had a conversation with him and we decided I, I had to uh, resign from the bank and take care of the kids. So we don't have to pay any child minders, etc. Et because then it was one income. Um, shortly after that, it started having a toll on me. Now you're used to receiving your pay every month. There's nothing coming in into your bank account anymore. So it's almost like history repeating itself. Now I'm having to rely on my husband to take care of me. And that took me to a place where, for me, that's where my life, life lessons really started. He had already begun on uh, the journey of personal development and had tried to get me to come along, but I didn't want to know anything. Because, you know, I'm working, life is good, I'm able to buy whatever shoe I want, whatever handbag I want, and things like that. So eventually, when I, I'm at home, taking care of my daughter, and you've taken the older ones to school, baby is asleep, what do you do with your life? You've worked all your life from the age of 19. Now you're, what, 30-something, you're home with a baby, baby, you know, you're doing nothing. So that took me into deep depression, and then I came across Oprah Winfrey. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, her show was still being aired here in the UK. She was still mm -hmm. doing the Oprah show. Mm -hmm. So I would watch her show. There was another, um, I believe he's a psychologist, Dr. Phil. He was also on on the uh, on TV here at that time. So I started watching these two people and they would bring people on, interview people. That's when I started hearing about mental health, this, yeah. that, the other, and all of these. So, I, and, you know, things started making a lot of sense to me. And then from then, I found out about personal development. And I realized that was the journey my husband was on that he had tried to bring me on that I didn't want to know about. So one day I'm lying in the sofa crying, asking God questions. Why me? Why am I going through this? Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And then I just heard a voice say, pick up your Bible. Yeah. That's another deep revelation, yes. isn't it? <laughs> yes. So I picked up the okay. Bible. And for the first time I thought to myself, you know what? I've heard about God. I've been to church. I was born mm -hmm. a Christian. But I'm going to discover who this God is for myself. So even common five pounds to purchase a bus pass at that time, I didn't have that five pounds. I had to walk from home almost 20 minutes to my local WH Smith, which is a stationery store, mm -hmm. to go and buy a notebook because mm -hmm. I wanted to be able to read the Bible and make notes and really highlight and get to understand. Anyway, I did all that and it took me nine months to read the Bible because I wasn't going to rush through it. I wanted to discover God for myself. Then I come across a scripture in the book of um, Jeremiah where God says, 
call unto me and I will answer thee and I will show you great Amen. and mighty things you, that, that you do not know that have been hidden. So I thought, what are these things that God has hidden? It means there are certain things in life which God has hidden and he only reveals to those who draw closer to him. Mm -hmm. I later find out that that is what, what some people call the secret, meaning that there were secrets to life, mm -hmm. that you only discover those secrets if you build that bond, that relationship with God. Life started having a brand new meaning. We started discovering many other people whom we have called our mentors for so many years. You know, the likes of Bob Proctor, whom we learned about the paradigm shift from, the likes of Zig Ziglar, um, Jim Rohn, Oprah herself, so many other people. You know, then we learn about the secrets by Rhonda Bynes, mm -hmm. learn about the law of attraction, the spiritual laws. So we thought, wow, metaphysics, so, all so, of these things. So it means that I wanted to know how you cope with that depression. So. That's so these, these, these are the are mechanisms, some of the, yes, these, these, these are, are some of the things that, that took me out okay. of depression. Right. And right. so coming back to the earlier question, mm -hmm. it was out of that, right from the get-go, mm -hmm. even from the Bible in the book of Corinthians, mm -hmm. that Paul mentions that when you start learning, start teaching, okay. because it is in learning and teaching that you get to know more and become even stronger. And these are some of the things that um, when you hit obstacles or challenges in life that seem to bring you back to because there's always times in life where you feel like you're relapsing you're going mm -hmm. back into a state yeah. but it is in mm -hmm. teaching that you're able to still keep yourself grounded and make sure that you're focused and you're still on track mm -hmm. and so for my husband and i teaching became our thing not just for me in the classroom but for the whole world we decided we have to teach and there's no better way than teaching than to also put it in a book for those whom you cannot reach by voice, to be able to grab a copy and still learn for you. Yeah. This is a very remarkable answer because you've sort of covered most of the areas. But then as we go along, everything is learning up there. Anyway, how long did it take you to write your first book? I would say about four weeks. Four weeks to write the book. Um, one thing I had learned during my personal development journey at the early stages of it was to keep a journal. And up yeah. until today, I keep a journal. So I always have notebooks on me, in my handbag, around me, in the house, everywhere. I like to just jot things down. So when I decided to write the book, it's almost like it was already in my head what I wanted to put on paper. Okay. So four weeks. Um, I had started work then, which is teaching. I would go to work come back and do my wifely duties, my motherly duties and everything. And for me, what I call my me time was when I would sit down and start writing. And I wrote every, I typed out every single letter in the book myself. Nobody on this planet Earth can take credit for the fact that they wrote even one word for me. I did everything myself. And the way I did it was, you know, I would take care of the family. When everybody had gone to sleep, I would sit down and write sometimes till 2 a.m. Bear in mind, I've been to work as well. And this is what I always tell young women or even women in, in, in general, that if you have a goal, if you have an objective, if you have something that you really want to achieve, um, it is never magic. You can never really realize a dream if you do not put every fiber of your being towards taking action to make it happen. There are no excuses. There are no gray areas. It's either black or white. It's either you're doing it or you're not doing it. You cannot be in the middle where, oh, I want to do it, but one minute it's like, oh, I don't want to do it. No, you're doing it, go for it. You're not doing it, sit back, relax, and enjoy yourself. So, yeah, there were times where I'd tighten about 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., go to bed a few hours, wake up, take the children to school, make my way to work. Within four weeks, it was done. And then, obviously, friends and family, I got my husband to proofread it. Um, the kids, even the children as young as they were, gave them bits to read, one or two friends, and then I paid somebody to do the final proofreading mm -hmm. before I went to print. Yeah. You know, when I ask the question, I think she covers most of the, <laughs> the following one, so yeah. it's like it's making it easy for me because <laughs> I really want to cover everything, make sure that, you know, the viewers out there have the experience that you have because it's very rich. Thank you. Yeah, so how do you publish your books? Right, um, I've only written one. I've got a couple of manuscripts which I haven't sent to print yet, but they, my, 
Eric helped me to bind them so they, that we have them there. Um, I just went online, typed in UK publishers, uh, read a couple of reviews about them. And then if I'm correct, I think with this particular one, Eric found them for me if I'm right. And they are Grosvenor uh, publishers. They're in Sussex. So I read reviews on them, contacted them. We had a chat on phone. And then they gave me their package, what they could do, uh, which bookstores they were going to send the book to, online portals and all that. And I was happy with their pricing and everything. So I, I settled with them. Yeah, but what... what um surprises me is the time limit of you writing the book for like you take four weeks as you said it's quite a remarkable period of time because um some of us i'm telling you <laughs> i'm i'm developing a novel it's been like three or four years i'm still on it so it means that some of you has got a very high sort of mental faculty in terms of developing your work but i take ages to come up with just one word, trust me. And I think so, it's, it's I think it's about creativity. That's now, one thing about. I've just remembered mm -hmm. it was um, there was one particular author. He's a man of a preacher as well. Mm -hmm. Whom I read his book, Your Best Life Now, and this is Joel Austin. Mm -hmm. And any time I picked up Joel Austin's books to read, because I listened to him on TV, he's it's almost as if yeah, he's a preacher. Um, Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas. Mm -hmm. It's almost as if you could hear his voice. You know, so I've listened to him, you're reading his book now, and it's almost as if Joel is sitting in front of you, mm -hmm. speaking to you. And that's the type of author I wanted to be. So I took time to study quite a number of authors as well, mm -hmm. to decide what kind of author I wanted to be. I wanted people to be able to pick up my book, and if they knew me and knew my voice, when they're reading their, my book, I wanted them to be able to hear my voice in their ears. Mm -hmm. Or even if they're at work or they're somewhere, something from the book will ring a bell. And, and they'll say to themselves, oh, Marie said A, B, C, okay. you know. So I, I, settled, I settled with that type of style of writing, yeah. So um, where do you get your information and ideas of that creativity to, you know, to develop your book? Um, I don't know, I take inspiration from so many things. I take okay. inspiration from so many things. I think number one, my, num my number one inspiration is my husband. Number two inspiration, my girls. <laughs> Number and the reason I say it, Eric is because uh, we talk a lot. We talk a lot. I mean, from day one, I don't know, we've been talking and talking. We never run out of things to talk about. So he inspires me a lot. Um, I mean, even up until now, he'll say something and I'll say to him, I'll say to him, you're very deep. Why, you know, why aren't you sharing all these things? <laughs> yeah, he, he's that type well, of is person. It, is he the fire type or the talkative type? No, I'm the vocal one. You're the vocal one. Okay. He, he is, he's deep, but um, he translates, his one comes through in his own. I suppose he, he, he speaks through his art. Okay, so that's, that's, in that's a while, his form of communication. Once in a while, he drops something deep. He will drop oh. something, and you, I'm like, "You should be sharing this. You should be telling the <laughs> but world." He this. Said it once but he shared it with yes. me, so I will take it okay. and translate it the best mm -hmm. way I also can. Uh -huh. yeah. So he's my number one inspiration. The girls as well, um, the family life. I mean, sometimes we could be driving through somewhere. I see nature, and I'm like, "Wow, this is so deep." Mm -hmm. Just by looking at a tree. Yeah. Or by looking at some ducks or in a pond or a lake somewhere, you're like, mm, mm. look at stillness. And I can write a whole chapter on stillness mm -hmm. just by looking at a tree standing still. Mm -hmm. You know. So I'm able to I've learned over the years how to connect things and that's how I get my inspiration. And then also from mentors. From mentors and from experiences in life in general. So yeah. when did you write your first book? I wrote my first book four years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I published it on my birthday for my 40th, um, so I've given my age out, <laughs> which is okay. Um, I wanted it to be, you know, when many people turn 40, they want to throw a party, they want to, you know, just go all out, some travel, some, you know. I wanted my 40th to be memorable to me and to my generations to come. So I wanted my children one day to be able to, when they turn 40, mm -hmm. to be able to look back and say, this is what mommy 
did for her 40th. So, assuming I wasn't here anymore. I wanted my children to be able to pick up my book and say, this is what mommy did. She left us this. Not only the copyrights or royalties or you whatever. I wanted to ask the age, but I, I thought <laughs> this is too private too and personal. sensitive and personal. So, but at least you've given us the, the answers. Oh, yes. Right? Because so. when I'm, if, if, I'm, if God calls me now, it will be on the obituary. So I might as well say it myself. <laughs> Yeah, they will write, sun, sun, sunrise to sunset. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted I wanted to do something memorable for myself. I mean, you throw a party, people will come and eat the food, drink, mm -hmm. have a good time. They'll go and start complaining and say, you know, the food wasn't even nice. The hall was this, this, that, the other. I just wanted to do something for myself, for okay. women and for girls. So, yeah, mm -hmm. four years ago. So it was something personal. Something too. very personal. It meant a lot to me to do that. Great. So what do you do when you're not writing? I know you've, you've said a lot about, you know, your schedule and your daily activities, but maybe your hobbies. What, what, what do you do when, when you're not writing? Because I can see that writing is one of your hobbies. Yeah. What do you do when you're not doing it? What do I do when I'm not writing? When I'm not writing, I'm writing. I'm always writing. Eric is here. He can attest to that. Many people now know me. So through... you don't have a break when it comes to writing. Oh no, I never have a break. Many people know me now through social media, Facebook lives. I'm always, you know, somebody's asking me to come and speak somewhere and so on. Um, I'm always writing. I always make sure I show up prepared. So I can hear a piece of news somewhere, mm -hmm. and I'll go and do a bit of research on it. And if something really ticks me, I'll grab a notebook and I'll write something in there. So I think it's become a part of me now where mm -hmm. I'm always writing. It may not necessarily be in a book, but I'm jotting things down. Um, other than that, if I don't really have a pen and a paper in my hand, I'm not a movies person, so I wouldn't say I watch movies. Um, maybe catch up on the news a little bit, or I'm chatting with Eric. Yeah. I, do I really have a hobby? <laughs> I think my next question you've answered my next question because yeah. I wanted to ask you um, what was I thinking about I wanted to ask you um, how many books have you written but I think you answered it before previously, you, uh, previously yeah. Yeah. Okay. and um, I think you've answered that question so that's okay but do you have any suggestions and advice and recommendation on how to assist new entrants who want to write and become, you know, better writers? Yes, yes, yes. I'm a firm believer that, and I always say this to women, you have something to contribute to the world. The world is waiting to hear from you. Everybody has something to contribute. And so I refuse to accept the fact that people are quiet and silent. One way or the other, you have to leave a mark here on earth. And so the best way to those who are not able to communicate verbally is to put it in a book. It could be a recipe book. You could be a very good cook. Your husband loves your cooking. Your children love your cooking. You learn from your grandmother, your mother. Put it in a book. Put your style in a book. It could be anything. You're an artist. Show people how to do art. You're a good communicator. Teach public speaking, but put it in a book. Because sometimes when you don't put value on what you have, your skills and your talents, people take it for granted. So put it in a book, get them to purchase it and put value. The whole idea of people purchasing your book is for them to add value or put value on what it is that you have to offer to the world. Uh -huh. So to those who want to also become authors, my advice will be, first of all, is visualization. Build a mental picture of what it says that you want to communicate to the world. Build a mental picture of that and then begin to put it down. Rough sketch. Again, my husband is an artist and I've seen that before he puts anything on canvas, he would always do a sketch. You know, sometimes he'll do it on his iPad or a piece of paper. It's like um, I like when he's doing it. You know, yes. sometimes you video it, and I'll be watching it like, yeah. that. wow, it's yeah. amazing. <laughs> it's all part of the process. Yeah. It's the preparation yeah. stage. Yeah. So begin to capture your thoughts. It could just be, you know, you draw a spider gram, you put the titan in the middle, and then start putting bullet points down. 
Okay. Those bullet points could end up being your chapters. And then if we're going very technical, you have to decide what type of book am I looking to write? As you said, as I came here, I can see educational books here. Yes. However, you're writing a novel as well. So you need to decide what type of book do I want to write? Mm -hmm. Is it a how-to book where you're teaching people how to do something? Is it a novel? Um, are you trying to maybe retell history? What is it? What type of book? Have that in mind as well. Begin to put the structure together. How many chapters do you want? Some you can have seven chapters, 14 chapters, 21 chapters, 30 chapters. It's up to you. I'm somebody, when I pick up a book, I've learned how to do speed reading now. Mm -hmm. So when I pick up a, a book, the title, the information on the back of the blurb, introduction, a couple of pages, a couple of chapters, and the end, I know what the book is about. You know. So if you give me a big, fat, thick book to read, those are not my kind. I want people to be able to glance through quickly, get the message, and be able to apply the lessons in the, to their lives. So it's up to whoever is coming in as an author, a new author, to decide what type of book they want to, what type of author they want to be, what type of book you want to write, what your message is, and then begin to prepare, put the spine together. Once you have the spine in place, everything else will begin to fall into place. Yeah. Thank you very much. Viewers, you can hear the master speaking the master of authors you know so I, I hope that this interview is going to really benefit those who want to come into the business but then can I ask you one question again um thanks for the you know previous question um can you share with us some of the reviews on your work right so some of the reviews um to my amazement you know sometimes as a human being you think you believe in yourself, but everyone still has that self-doubt in them. So the book came out. Um, I organized a launch to celebrate my birthday. And I had 80 women attend the event that day because I did it mainly for women. So 80 women attend the event and each and every one of them bought a copy. And then, obviously, because it was on Amazon as well and mm -hmm. Barnes and Noble in the United States, people started grabbing copies there. Some would take photos back then and send it to me. There was one white lady in Kent who actually bought a copy and she took a photograph and sent it to me. She's now a Vogue photographer, mm -hmm. Vogue UK photographer. And she said, in fact, she was the one who took the photograph for the, um, the cover of the book. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she, she sent me a review. I put it on my social media back then. And she says, you have taught me a lot. Just by reading. That's the book. Yeah. Can we close? Yeah. That's the book. Explosive Secrets. So she said, you've taught me a lot. I've learned a lot. Um, I'm a young woman. I'm growing up. But what she took from there was how to build her confidence. Reviews came from the USA. There was a woman who actually called one day. She bought it, put it on her kitchen counter in the US and took a photo and sent it to me. And then uh, she used to listen to Eric and I. So one day she called and she said, because of the book, because her husband had read flicks through the pages. And so, you know, he also had knowledge of what it is that I had put in there. She was actually in bed wrapped up in her, in a quilt. Her husband comes to her and says, are you not going to go and listen to Marie today? You have to go and listen to Marie. Mm -hmm. And then another time he comes from work, he picks up his laptop to do some work and he puts the laptop down and says, Eric and Marie says I should spend time with my wife. So he shut the laptop down. <laughs> you know. Had he not seen elements of what I have said in the book, a man who is what almost one and a half times my age will not be trying to get his wife out of bed to go and listen to me. Yeah. So the reviews so far have been amazing. Um, people will meet you and you know they'll say, oh, you know, I read this chapter on gratitude, and because of you, now I'm I've learned that when I'm going through something in life, I still have to be grateful. One that really stood out for many women was stillness, because I used to. Um, I had a group on social media about three years ago where I used to do Bible studies in the mornings uh, from six to uh, six to seven, sometimes six to seven thirty in the mornings. 
And one thing that I really, I taught for about three years was stillness, how to be still, i.e. meditation. Mm. And again, Psalm 46 verse 10, be still and know that I am God. Stillness <clears throat> plays a very key role in how successful you can become. Because if you're going through the rough times in life, challenges, obstacles, whatever it is in life, if you learn to center yourself, align, and be still, that is where you get revelation. And it's out of revelation that manifestation happens, etc., etc. So, yeah, one that many of women took away was also stillness. And it's because I have a whole chapter on stillness in the book. So, um, in a, some few brief words, can you sort of summarize your book for the viewers to know what is the explosive secrets, what it's all about? Um, I would say Explosive Secrets is a self-help book. Mm -hmm. It's a transformational book. So when you pick it up and read it, not only would my words inspire you to begin to do something with your life, I'm more an action-oriented person. So the book will teach you to awaken from your sleep, awaken from a dormant state, and begin to do something with your life. So you become inspired. Some of the chapters will motivate you. A whole bunch of chapters will get you to begin to take action. And it is at the end of taking action where you're seeing results, where your transformation begins. And that is where you also can begin to teach. My end goal um, was for women to teach. Their girls, their daughters, their nieces, and so on. To build a whole generation of young girls who are growing up now to have a certain type of mindset, to think a certain way. Because what, what I've learned in life is that successful people do things a certain way. You cannot do things anyhow yeah, and expect to be successful. Yes. Yeah. Successful people very do things a certain very way. Very disciplined. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I highlight some of those in the book. Okay. And so if I'm to sum up the book in one word, it's a transformational self-help book. It will help you to transform from point A to where you want to get to in life. And then you can carry on yourself. So viewers, if you want to transform yourself, it's a self-help transformational book. So you can grab a copy and then you make sure you read it and transform whatever situation that you are in to become a better person. And um, my next question is, what do your critics say about your work? Critics? Um, I've got a few, a couple. If I one came from my own, one of my own daughters, Mommy, but nobody knows you. Why are you writing a book? Because mm. her mind as a child says that only rich people can write books. Mm. So I said to my daughter, well, nobody has to know me before I can tell my story. It is in telling the story that people get to know who you are. And that comes with being able to, first of all, know that you're vulnerable, stand in your vulnerability, and almost like expose your vulnerability to the whole world. So I said to my daughter, I'm going to write it anyway. And out of that, people will get to know me. So when you grow up, I expect you to also write your own. People don't need to know. So my first critic was my own daughter. And then, you know, one or two from my community. Daniel, who's written a book, um, you know, nobody's going to buy it. Because we have this mindset, mindset that it has to be right. other people and yeah. not us. You don't want to even go into it. Yeah. Yes, there's a lot to talk about. <laughs> and yeah. People won't like it out there, so we just leave that. Exactly. Just carry on. Yeah, yeah it has to be other people yeah. and not us. Mm -hmm. So again, it was a barrier I had to, a hurdle I had to jump over. Um, it's nobody else, it's me. Yeah. Everybody has to listen to what I also have to contribute to the world. So I'm going to go ahead and write it anyway. And then you have a choice, two choices. You either purchase and read it, or you just watch other people purchase, read, and have their lives transformed. Yeah, so some of the, those are some of the only critiques I'll say I've had. In terms of the content of the book itself, um, the style of the book, and I haven't really had anybody critique it. In fact, I've had more positive reviews, reviews than, than it. Yeah, okay. that's a good show. In that respect, yeah.
Um, your last question, which this brings me to the last, you know, moment with Marie Amampa Bwedu. Your last question is, what are your experiences and your challenges as a writer? Ooh. My experiences and my challenges. Yes. Okay. So you can talk about the experiences first or yeah. you talk about the challenges. The challenges first, first right. So I think uh, the experiences, the positive experiences would be the fact that I've written a book. Um, for me, that's everything. It means a lot to me. Uh, the fact that if I'm to die today, mommy left something, something tangible for my daughters. Um, I wouldn't have just gone. They say the cemetery is the richest place because people have died with their talents, their skills, their abilities, and all these things. Yeah. So I would have left something uh, tangible in the world, uh, something that people can trace back to. Uh, the fact that I'm able to speak into women's lives and make reference to the book is a positive experience. The fact that women are buying the book, men are buying the book is a positive experience. Challenges is more the financial side and the technical side in the sense that I would have loved to have had copies with me that I can give out to people for free. Yeah. Uh -huh. But those come at a financial, you know, you have to pay a price for those financially. Um, marketing the book as well yeah. is still a bit of a challenge in the sense that I don't have the technical know-how to market the book. Mm -hmm. So I don't spend too much of my energy marketing it, which does impact the sales. Um, and the only reason is that there are ways of doing these things, yeah. you know, so being able to, to. Yeah. exactly. Because there are distribution channels when it comes to even Amazon on, you know, sales and marketing. Yeah. So you can subscribe to all that. Yeah. And then they can be doing all these things you know, for you. Marketing yeah. For you. So I don't have that technical but, know-how. Yeah. So but it's about, as you said, it's about financial, you know, yeah. um, sort of, uh, how do you call it? Financial, um, you know, Italian. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So it's the it's the marketing side mm. of it where had I even known that there were, mm. you know, those who could do that for you, I'll just subscribe, pay them and get them to do it, but I just had no clue. So as far as I know, my publishers have put it on Amazon. Every year I renew that subscription with the publisher mm -hmm. so they can continue to keep it on Amazon. Um that's a, that's about it. And then once in a while when I remember like this morning, because I knew I was coming here and I had to bring a copy to the interview, I put it on my social media. Otherwise, sometimes I completely forget about it. Um, I attended an event once where I gave a talk to a group of women. And when I finished, it was actually a man who came and told me. He said, but I hear you're an author. Where's your book? I said, I didn't bring a copy. He said, but that is you. Wherever you go, you should market yourself. Carry a copy with you. So I came home and I said to Eric, this is what I learned today, that I always have to bring copies, even if it's one copy or a couple with me, which means that I have to ask the publishers to send me, pay for, and ask them to send me a fee. So these are the technicalities that I'm learning about. For me, it's just about I've written a book, it's on Amazon, you know, I give you the link, go there and that. But there's more to it. So Mark Just remember the financial. Let me, let, me, yeah. let me do it before, you know, it gets a bit murky out there. Financial constraints and commitments, you know, because sometimes we have our own issues in terms of, you know, um, your commitments about yeah. your finance, your funds, what to do, your bills and all that. And then when it, it comes to sort of promoting your books, you need to put money in there to make sure that things go the way you want it. That's right. So that's, that's what I wanted to say. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So for me, I'll say one of the major challenges is marketing. I could have sold more. I mean, last year, I saw one of my mentors in Ghana, wrote, she wrote her first book, and um, I'm sure she wouldn't mind me mentioning her name, Ohine Yuri Gifti Auntie, wrote her first okay. book, yeah. and she got me to write, um, uh, what's it called? There was a little, I can't remember what it's called, but I wrote a little, a paragraph okay. for, you know, you have yeah, the forward, synopsis. that's Very right, yeah. yeah, yeah, so mm -hmm. I wrote something for her mm -hmm. um, in the book. But just watching how this woman marketed her book, well, it was amazing. I think she's got a platform, isn't it? So she has the platform she's able to move, 
you know the sales app yeah. yeah yeah but it's just it's just mm. how you know the marketing technique that she used did she have a team I, mean, I believe she has a team yeah because but you she, need a team to put things together before yeah. you can run but she herself was very much involved and it was okay. it was something as little as speaking somewhere and having a t-shirt with a book, with a book. in front yeah these are things i had never thought and of. i had it when i did my launching yes yeah. these are things i didn't do yeah. and i still haven't done having a banner a roll-up banner. banner in fact yeah. i do have a banner with the book we had mm. the banner with mm. the book at the launch but you see it's little things like that yeah being able to even souvenirs like, yeah souvenirs yeah. or mm. approach even Ghanaian businesses here in the uk yeah. to stock some so that per every sale yeah. maybe we strike a deal per every sale those are the little things that I didn't, I didn't even, they, they didn't even cross my mind. Have you registered with the um, Society of um, Collecting, or what, what is it? Is it Authors Society of Collecting and um, Licensing and Collecting? You haven't? No. Okay, I'll give you the details to do that. Because what they do is to push your books into the, some of the libraries. Right. And then maybe give you some sort of royalties as okay. and when, you know, yeah. they, they do it. Yeah, so yeah. it's a very good society to join as an author yeah. in UK. Yeah. yeah. So these yeah. are some of the things I learned from my mentor, um, mm. Ohine Eri Gifty, last year. Um, in fact, before she got me to do the write-up for that paragraph for her book, etc. And when her book came out on Amazon and I helped, you know, I also did a book review on it. And my, my, I had taken mine off Amazon. Okay. I had taken mine off Amazon for about a year. Why did you do because that? Because I just couldn't be bothered to market it. But Amazon is going to do that for you. Exactly. Just, just subscribe to their marketing you, channels that, that's, and everything is going to be sorted out. So I remember it? sending her a message and I said, you know what, I'm just looking at you within a matter of two days how you're marketing because your book. This, has, this is on Kindle as well. So you can have the soft copy, electronic copy, and really without even buying the hard copy. Yes. You know, so these are things yeah. I need to mm. do with my. Mm. So I remember messaging her and I said, you've really inspired me to put my book back on Amazon. So I think this book went back on Amazon mm -hmm. uh, October last year okay. after having that brief chat with her. Mm. You know, so these are the things that I would want new uh, up and coming authors to bear in mind. Take some of my mistakes. Listen to what Mr. Donko has said, because he's an author of how many books? I mean, I can see about five here already, five different books. So take th these experiences with you so that when you your book comes out, you can put all these structures in place. It's all about marketing. Mar marketing equals sales. Yeah. Marketing yeah. equals sales. Yeah. Thank you very much, the master author. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope that viewers, you're going to get more information from Marie today of what she has really deliberated and I hope it's going to benefit you and your up and coming whatever plans that you've got in terms of writing something good for the community. Thank you for listening to us and thank you for coming. I really do appreciate that. It's an honor to get these celebrities in my corner. Wow. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks for having God us. Thank you. God bless.